Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Continuing with our 2022 season previews as we take a look at the Utah Utes. I feel like a team that just flew under the radar, a little bit disrespected all year. <clears throat> they were clearly the best team in the Pac-12 this year. Until they beat the wheels off of Oregon twice in a row. Twice. Twice in a row. The boys made some money off that. This Utah team is a fun team to watch because – Normally in the Pac-12, you get a lot of air raid. You get a lot of speed in space. This Utah team is different. They are very, very physical. They like to run the ball, and they like to play good defense. I'm a huge fan of what Kyle Whittingham has done, and I'm a huge fan of what they got coming back. Before we get into it, just wanted to say thank you guys for all the support you guys have shown the channel. If you guys do like the content, consider subscribing to the channel. And then more importantly, let us know in the comment section what players we're missing out on, what players need to get on our radar. We're doing this to learn more about each of these teams, and you guys are the experts of your own team, so let us know who we're missing out on. Dill, let's start talking some Utah football. I feel like it starts with the quarterback and Cam Rising. Why don't you tell me a little bit about This has been your team now, last year. What do you see in this offense, and why do you think it's so dominant? Cam, The fact that Cam Rising didn't start that year – I think probably cost Utah a shot at a playoff because yeah. there's no way they lose those games early if he's playing. Cause I mean, what he did, he just like the way he runs, it doesn't look very athletic, but gets the job done. Runs really hard for a small guy. Doesn't have a huge looking arm, just gets the job done. Makes the throws he's got to make just like a, I don't need like just a winner. I, I don't know how else, what else to describe. A guy I, would, I think that's really fair. A, he's just a, a tough a, guy. Yeah. He's an overall solid college football quarterback. I mean, completed almost 65% of his balls. Had a great touchdown to interception ratio, 20 touchdowns to five interceptions. That's what Utah does. They take care of the football. And then they had a phenomenal run game. Before we get into the run game, I think the optimism about this Utah team is that Cam Rising is now the leader of this team. It's hard to be the leader when he started the season off as QB2. You kind of get thrusted into San Diego State's game. This is his team. It's been his team since January workouts. And I'm excited to see him kind of take control of this offense a little bit more. Now, the one concern you might have is the offensive weapons around him. And I don't even know if it's a concern. It's just a lack of that clear wide receiver one. Now, what Utah likes to do is they like to run a lot of that 12 personnel, two tight ends in on the field. And they got two of the best tight ends in the country, Dalton Kincaid and Brayton Kuth. Still. I think Britton Covey is going to be a massive, massive Britton loss Covey for this hurts. Team. Like Britton Covey, for as much as like you probably underassume him, just from like a, a tiny, tiny guy, doesn't look like your prototypical college star. But the guy just made plays in the punt game, especially really dynamic wide out on the offense, taking end arounds, all all those things. He brought a little bit of juice to that Oregon or traditionally like more slow, grindy down Utah offense. And he's going to be a really hard to replace. I, I'm not sure where they're going to go, but you're right. He's a, he's probably the biggest loss on their offense, I would say. Yeah, and so what they're going to do, I think, is really use these tight ends. A guy that I do like is Devon Valle. I think he's going to be kind of hopefully that traditional wide receiver one kind of towards the boundary. But this team is going to work to run the football with Tavion Thomas and then use those tight ends in play action, get the ball to those guys in space. I mean, Dalton Kincaid is legitimately – I think I like his game a little bit more, but I like them both. Dalton Kincaid's a guy that you want to get him the ball in space. He's very good. Both these guys are very good after the catch. You get Cam Rising with that play action rolling out of the pocket. He's very good throwing on the run. I don't think they're going to need a, a true wide receiver one because they like to use the tight ends and they like to establish that run game. And, and they really haven't played with a ton of dominant wideouts under Kyle Whittingham. It's like I can't remember them putting first round picks or anything like that ever. So it's, it's not, probably, it's not something that they need. They always play with great tight ends and they run the ball hard on teams that don't want to have the ball run hard on them. So obviously the run game, Tavion Thomas emerged out of that crowded backfield last year and was just an absolute force. I what finished with 21 touchdowns, average five and a half yards per carry. This guy was a running back that Pac-12 defenses just simply didn't want to tackle. Runs the ball hard. He has good breakaway speed when he needs to. I think all the Utah fans know about Tavion Thomas. The whole country knows about Tavion Thomas at this point. A guy I want to highlight is Micah Bernard. He's a guy that is a little bit of a scat back. I think he'll produce in, in the receiving game. 
He had 26 catches for 251 yards last year. He averaged six yards of carry on the ground. He's a guy that I would kind of dub as the X factor of this Utah defense because he's kind of – he's a guy that you want to get the ball to in space, and there's not a ton of you guys on that Utah team that you, you really want to get the ball in space to. They're more kind of run between the tackles team. He's a guy that I would have my eye on. And hopefully he can give you something of what Britton Covey did because that's kind of Britton. That was – as much as Britton, I guess Britton Covey was a wide out, but they really did use him to catch the ball in traditional wide out role. I mean, he gave you those plays that you're kind of describing with Micah Bernard. So hopefully, yeah. given the chance to shine, he can he can step in. I don't think he'll be Britton Covey, but at least give you that part of the game, if you will. Offensive line, I, I like their offensive line. They Amherst. lose some guys like um, Nick Ford's a guy that they lose, and, and Olison who – was just an absolute – I don't think I said his name right, but he was just massive, just a massive human being. They got some guys that you're excited about. I mean, Brendan Daniels coming, moving over from right tackle to left tackle. They have – we're listening to some of the beat reports talk on this Utah team, nine, ten guys deep that they feel comfortable with starting on the offensive line. And quite frankly, that is probably the most important – Utah thing O-lines, they just – you trot them out every year. They're yep. bigger, they're tougher, they're yep. more physical. They all go heavy on the eye black, and it's like just looks intimidating as any team in the world. So it's just like a unit that's been good, it seems like, for Kyle Whittingham's whole old tenure at Utah. So you'd it's probably not a group you worry about on a given year. You just know they're going to trot out there and be hammers. Yeah. Now looking Especially at the, in the Pac-12. Yeah, I'm telling you, the Pac-12 just wanted no part of Utah last year. Now, the defense, this is probably what I'm concerned with. You look at the defensive stats last year, 27th in total defense, giving up yards per game, 35th in scoring. This was a very good defense. However, I felt like it was pretty reliant on some guys like Devin Lloyd and Alfie Sewell, who are not coming back. And Dill, Mike took- Tafua, is, he was like an absolute monster. And I know he didn't like get a ton of respect in the draft world, but like just a, a guy that just looks so strong so physical and, and just a relentless motor on them. So he's, to me, on your defensive line, a guy you really are going to struggle to replace. But I do like some of the pieces coming back, and I think the two guys who stand out are Junior Tafuna and, and Devin Kafosi. Like, both just played really good football, and I also think you could throw in number 95, Aliki, them all. They, those are just those prototypical big, tough, make play Utah defensive lineman. So I think you're what you're losing on the edge. I think you're coming back with a really strong group in the middle. Van Fillinger is another guy that I really liked. He had nine and a half tackles for a loss, five and a half sacks last year. Utah always seems to kind of get an edge guy who will, who, who will give you 10 and a half sacks per game. Kyle Whittingham does a phenomenal job replacing talent. It is probably the unit I'm most worried about. However, another unit that you got to be a little concerned about just because of the pure production you lose is at the linebacker spot. Losing a guy like Devin Lloyd, who uh, the stat sheet that Devin Lloyd put out last year, and, and the film backed it up, 111 tackles, 22 tackles for loss, seven sacks, four interceptions. He's been great for two years, really. So He was absolutely awesome for Utah, and he's going to be a brutal loss. But they get some guys, and I don't want to disrespect Nef- Nefi Sewell either, either. He's also a very good football player, 89 tackles, seven half tackles for loss. But Dill. Talk a little bit about Mahoum Diabate, who we absolutely love coming in from Florida. Yeah, Diabate, I think, was probably the best linebacker on Florida's team last oh, year, yeah. and that includes oh, yeah. some good players like Eventual Miller. I mean, Diabate just kind of rose to the occasion. Being a guy who was going sideline to sideline, that tall, lean athlete, the one thing you'd probably like to see him is get a little more explosive, like the Devin Lloyds, like the uh, – Nicobe Deans, those elite, elite linebackers who kind of just come out of a cannon when the ball snap. I think that's probably – you hope Mohamed Diabate can get a little bit more like that because you can see the athleticism, just how he covers the field, how he plays the pass, and, and I think a physical linebacker for a guy who's a little on the thin side. So I, I'm – really like, this is such a massive transfer to get because you're right. When you lose two real studs, and you don't. And Utah's never a team that's recruiting with the best of them, but to get a guy like Diabate to roll in and, and kind of bridge the gap between a Devin Lloyd and everyone else, I think is really big. For them. Yeah, he's a guy that I absolutely love watching at Florida. You said it, sideline to sideline, very good in space. I would second what your concern is. 
about getting downhill, being explosive downhill. Devin and making has plays in the backfield. Like, 22 that's what... tackles for a loss, seven and a half sacks. Mohamed Diabate, he only had two and a half tackles for a loss last year. So he's not really getting downhill like Devin Lloyd. So hopefully he can get that going. Another and Hopefully linebacker. Utah teaches it to like do it because Utah develops talent for – for what they don't recruit, like they make, they get guys playing to their potential. Oh yeah, and I don't think you could say the same about Florida. So hopefully, Diabate can get coached up, get kind of in that Devin Lloyd mode, and go to work and be a star, be get himself into like that first round, second round kind of conversation. That that type of play, he has the capability to do it. That's no doubt in my mind. Lander Barden, a true freshman in the twenty twenty two class, top hundred recruit. Utah doesn't normally bag this high level recruit. He's coming in. He's a legacy guy. He's had family members play for Utah. I would expect him to come in and contribute. And then the guy, Gabe Reed from Stanford, 10 and a half tackles for loss. Might play more that edge role. I'm interested to see how they use him. But he's a guy that's proven commodity on the defense side of the football. Then there's secondary. They lose Good some year. guys, but they get back. One of the best cornerbacks in the whole entire country in Clark Phillips. Love his game. I also really, really like Cole Bishop's game from the safety spot. Not a ton of proven talent outside of Clark Phillips, but this Utah defense, especially in the secondary, I think will be good because when you have that number one cornerback, that kind of a racer cornerback, it's really hard to have that secondary. You know who I sneaky like is that Zamaya Vaughn. Like, he didn't play a ton last year, I don't think, but a really long, really athletic guy who makes plays in the football. And obviously a young kid, a younger player as a, as a sophomore coming up. And I want to see more of him because I yeah. I feel like you saw like the bones of a guy who can be really good just with the length he has and the ability to stick with guys, which is which is usually a problem those taller corners have. So keep an, keep an eye on him. I think he's going to play really good football. And I think this is going to be an excellent, excellent corner room because you're even getting back a really pretty solid nickel. So – I'm excited for this second. I think it's been really good. I'm excited for this team in general. Taking a look at the schedule, this is probably one of the more underrated games in the whole entire year. Florida Gators, Utah Utes. This is going to be an absolute blast to watch. I you don't get many cross conference SEC versus Pac-12 teams, and normally I would favor the SEC team because historically they're the faster, they're more physical team. There's not a there's no, not no, no more physical than the Utah Utes. And if there's anything Florida has struggled with in the past, it's physicality on defense. I'm not totally sure if defense, if that Florida defense wants to tackle Tavion Thomas 30 times a game, that one's going to be a fun game to see where this Utah team and this Florida Gators team is at. And then outside of that, this schedule sets up pretty good. Southern Utah should be a good one. San Diego state in the revenge game, Arizona state on the road, UCLA. And then, that big game yeah. against USC. A that lot better teams... be a late night game after a good slate. That'd just be an electric. Yeah, that'd be an electric one. Then off on the road at Washington State, Arizona, Stanford, Oregon, Colorado. So you draw both USC and Oregon. You're on the road at Oregon. You get USC at home. Those are probably the two. The, those are the three teams, Utah, USC, and Oregon, that are going to kind of compete for the Pac-12. Interested like to see it. how that plays out. Yeah, those are going to – I'm really happy those three are playing. I mean, at least Utah is playing the two of them. Just because I feel like Utah doesn't get the respect as, like, the class of the – and, and realistically, they're kind of – they just kind of arrived, I'd say, into being a premier competitive Pac-12 team. Like, they've been building under Whittingham, but now it seems like they've got the culture and the yeah the fit in place where they're really starting to be tough year in and year out. And and I think this will be a big year for them because the Pac-12 was down last year. Everybody knows it was down. You brought in some monster, monster coaches who, who are kind of reinvigorating some, let's say, sleeping giant programs. And we'll, we'll see. see. I'm, I'm excited to see what, if Utah can, can kind of bring it to them and, and play like they've been playing and, and out-muscle teams, out-work them, beat them off, all see, that. See, that's classic, though. Utah's not the flashy team. They didn't bring in a flashy coach. They didn't bring any flashy transfers in. But you know they're going to bring it every single Saturday. That'll do it for our Utah 2022 season preview. Before we end the show, just wanted to give a shout-out to our sponsors of the show. Support for Rock Boys Football is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Their products are precision-engineered precision tools for your family jewels. 
Manscaped's performance package, the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. Join over 4 million, men, 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code ROCKBOYS at Manscaped.com. If my math is correct, that's 8 million balls. Guys, Manscaped is the real deal. It's got me feeling like an absolute demon for the summer. Makes the process so much easier. So again, get 20% off at Manscaped plus free shipping worldwide with promo code ROCKBOYS at Manscaped.com. We appreciate you guys' support on the channel. If you guys do like the content, subscribe. We appreciate it, and we'll talk to you all later. Peace.